What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteX.com. We're continuing our perfect workout series. Today, we're hitting the triceps. With a little help of Jesse and the muscle markers, we actually got a nice drawing of the triceps here, so I don't have to try to do this. The fact is, guys, it always starts with anatomy here. It always starts with science, because that's how you make smarter decisions in your training. So let's take a look at the anatomy, courtesy of the muscle markers, to see what's going on. You'll see here the triceps, obviously a three-headed muscle, is made up of the lateral head, the medial head here in green, and then the long head around the back. Now we talk about the importance of the long head all the time, and save your jokes, guys. I know, the long head's important, I get it. But the fact is, when it comes to tricep training, the long head's very important. Why? Because if you look at these two heads here, they exist on the upper arm. They don't cross the shoulder joint. They start here and they end here on the other side of the elbow. So all they're influencing here is elbow extension, right? Nothing that I did up here at the shoulder would matter because they don't cross that joint. Whereas the long head is the one that actually does cross that joint coming off of the scapula. So we know that if I can change position of the scapula, Right? No matter what I did, whether I brought it back, whether I brought it up over my head, all these things are changing the orientation of the scapula, meaning we're changing the tension on the long head of the triceps, so we know we can influence that. So if we're going to put together a perfect tricep workout, what we need to do is figure out ways to influence that. Now, take it a step further. We realize that the long head of the triceps is actually put on stretch when our arm is way up over our body here, so we need to choose exercises that do that. And we also know that we can bring it in the opposite direction all the way back behind the body and we can engage it into a full contraction, a fully shortened position. So we want to make sure we pick exercises that do that too. They'll be in our perfect workout. But at the same time, in pursuit of this, we don't want to lose sight of the fact that progressive overload still matters. Being able to load up the triceps like any other muscle as much as possible with heavier weights is going to help us to build them bigger. So we have to go and pick the right big exercises here. But beyond that, I'm going to show you some ways to actually tweak those to get more from them so you get the most out of your muscle building capabilities from them. Moving on, we also talked about in the perfect bicep workout this idea of overlapping strength curves. If we look at this exercise here, I have a band and dumbbells in my hand at the same time when I'm curling. Why did we do that? Because we know that when we use dumbbells, that we max out the strength curve right in the middle of the movement. And when we get all the way to the top, we kind of lose that tension. But we also realize that bands actually help us to keep the tension going as they stretch further and further. So we combine them together to make a better exercise. We can do the same exact thing here with triceps. And again, to be part of a perfect workout, I believe, we need to address that. And we're going to do that two ways. So guys, let's get it all started. I'll, I'll break it down exercise by exercise for you. And I'll give you the entire workout as we always have in the series at the very end. All right, guys, so we kick off the perfect tricep workout here with those heavy exercises. I like to address the heavier stuff first when we have our most energy and we're able to hit them hard. What is the first one up here? It's a close grip bench press, but it's actually a close grip pin press. Now, why are we pressing off of the pins instead of doing a full range of motion press? Because guys, if you're trying to target the triceps the most and overload the triceps, you do have to realize that the majority of the work being done by the triceps is from the midpoint and on. It's towards the lockout portion of the press. If we train all the way down here off of our chest, albeit a good exercise, we're actually working more of the delts to get them off of our chest. So what we're trying to do is isolate more of the function of the triceps, which will allow us to actually load this exercise up even heavier to finally match the strength that the triceps actually have here. So we perform these in 10, six, and four reps across three sets. We move on here, we go to the next big exercise, and that is the weighted dip. But again, there's opportunity here that I think is sometimes overlooked, and that is to do this in the form of a tricep, right? We can get to failure and we can push beyond failure. So what I do is I set up here with a weight around my waist. I could do it that way or I could hold the dumbbell between my legs, whatever is easier for you. The fact here is that I'm going to perform my dip and I'm going to drop set when I reach failure there to just let go of the weight and get back up there as a body weight option. Okay? As I do those reps, I'm going to then go to failure once again until I can now go and attach the band, put my knees inside and do a third set here without resting, continuing this drop set down with an assisted dip. Now in terms of the technique, no matter which form I was doing here, guys, in order to maximally engage the triceps, you want to do two things. Number one, you want to keep your torso as upright as possible. 
I just did a whole video on the chest and I talked about to maximize more chest involvement, you would lean forward. The opposite is true with triceps. You wanna keep your trunk up as, as tall as possible. The next thing is don't allow the forearms to sort of dominate this movement here. As you come up to the top, I like to almost hand release. Push down through the palms of my hand, let my triceps do all the extending here. Don't grip too much here. You're gonna, the tendency is to not go to full extension because you're activating the forearms too much. I want that release, let go of the hands as you get to the top. But the fact is guys, this tricep allows us to take the intensity even further. Now we move on here, we actually go to our superset. And this superset was made with the idea of doing what we talked about before, and that's focusing on the long head and taking it through both of those extremes. An exercise that puts it in more of a stretch position and an exercise that puts it in more of a contracted position. And we could do that here with a single cable. And we start with the push away. But you'll see there what I wanna do, since this is the stretch position of the long head, I try to accentuate that. I try to allow the arms to drift just a little bit higher on every rep to make sure that I'm getting a good stretch on the long head. We do that again by just allowing the elbows to travel as high as our body will allow them to. And then as soon as I'm done with that set, you can see I immediately transition right into this drag pushdown. And the difference here on a drag pushdown is the placement of my hands. How far away from my body are they? They're not away from my body like a traditional pushdown would be. They're right up against my chest, literally trying to ride my rib cage all the way down. Because you'll see what that does is it gets the elbows back into extension. That is the key when it comes to putting the tricep long head into that fully shortened position. You want to get your elbow back behind your body with full elbow extension, and we could do that here. So we work on this in a back-to-back -back format. You do 10 to 12 reps. The weight that you chose to do the first exercise stays the same, so there's no resting as you proceed to the second part of that combo. Then finally, we want to address those strength curves that I talked about in the beginning. And one of the exercises that we've talked about now here for a long time, and it's been copied poorly by others, is the rocking pushdown. Guys, if you want to see how to do it right, you watch it here. Now the idea here behind the rocking pushdown is, we realize that forces actually change during an exercise, right? If I were to take my arm right here and perform a regular pushdown, what happens is the line of resistance on a cable is actually going to be parallel at some point to the moving segment, which in this point is the forearm. When that happens, all the tension is gone. So what we wanna to try to do is maximize that tension by always allowing that line of resistance to be perpendicular to the forearm. So when we look at a regular pushdown, if I start right here, I have the cable pulling straight down, pointing straight down into my forearm, we're good. But when I get down to the bottom of that pushdown, now it's parallel to that forearm, meaning that we do not have as much resistance there, and you probably have felt that. It's pretty difficult to start, but it's not so hard at the end. But we can fix that with a rocking pushdown, because all I have to do is change the orientation of my body to allow for that. So you see here, I start in, leaning in. I've already got my leg dropped back, so I'm prepared to rock back. But I start in a closer position, so that as I initiate the pushdown, I have that perpendicular line of resistance from the cable pointing down through the forearm. As I get down into full extension of the elbows, you can see I lean back and I rock back, which allows that line to now line up more perpendicular than it was before with the forearm still, so we keep that tension on the triceps even in its contracted position here. Now I'm not leaning back with momentum to pull the, the cable down or the stack down, I'm just allowing my body position to change. This is a great addition to make sure you're hitting those strength curves. But we have another option here. It actually parallels a little bit more what we did with the biceps back in the beginning that I showed you here, and that's incorporating a band. Now one of my favorite exercises is the lying tricep extension. But if we incorporate the band, we have a banded lying tricep extension. You guys should probably figure out what's going on here. With the dumbbells, we know as we get towards the top that we actually start to lose resistance. So much so that I tell you, if you allow your dumbbells to get fully over your, your body, straight up over your body, you've actually taken away much of the tension on the triceps, making this exercise less effective. Instead, what we do though, is we keep them angled back just a little bit, but beyond that, we add the band so we have the additional resistance and stretch as we pull into that final contraction. Just by doing this, we've taken the same mechanics of the exercise, but by adding the two implements together, made a better exercise.
So there you have it guys, there is the perfect tricep workout. I want you guys to give it a try. Here's what it looks like here as I've been doing in all this entire series. I'm laying the workout out for you, sets and reps, so you can have it, you can try it, you can convince yourself once again that there really is only one way to train, and that's by putting science back in strength. That's what we do here on this channel, that's what we do in all of our programs. If you haven't already guys, check them out. Head over to athletenext.com right now, find the program that's right for you. All of them are built with the same idea, putting science back in strength. In the meantime, if you haven't already subscribed guys, please do so and turn on your notifications so you never miss one of our videos. And let me know what you want me to cover here. What else do you want me to break the muscle marker out on? Save some ideas, guys. We could keep, you know, keep them clean. I'll come back here and I'll do within reason what you're looking for. All right, guys. See you soon.